Yes, the light works and it looks amazing. This is Joey. He loves to run around leash free parks. Unfortunately, he's also pretty invisible at night. This makes it difficult to keep track of him and to keep him safe. So I did what any good dog owner would do. I spent the last year and several hundred dollars of my own money building a completely custom dog collar light. You know, instead of buying a $20 one off Amazon or the pet store. Fast forward a year later and I dare say that I think I actually did it. I built something that's way better than what you can buy out there. It's got Joey's name on it. It's water resistant. It features a 40 hour battery life. And most importantly, it's programmable with any light show I want, making him the coolest dog at the dog park. In this video, I'll take you behind the scenes of how I built this dog light, the challenges I encountered, and of course, the awesome end result. I settled on a classic design, a dog bone. This gives a nice wide surface for Joey's name, provides a spot on each end for the LEDs, and later I figured out that the middle can be used as the perfect spot for the button that turns the light on and off. I modeled and 3D printed a very basic bone shape just to give me rough dimensions to work with. Refining this design came much later and we'll get to that, but at this point I just wanted to know how much space I had to work with when building the electronics. It is easy to light up an LED as long as you don't have any other constraints. For example, cost, power efficiency, being able to see the light across the dog park, and your wife telling you that it has to have multiple colors and put on a light show. Then it gets a little trickier. I worked out that the main electronic components that I would need for this project would be batteries, LEDs, a microprocessor, I went with the ATtiny 84A, which we'll talk about later, a push button, a voltage regulator, which I ended up getting rid of later, and of course a big pile of resistors and capacitors that are somehow needed to make any electronics project work. I started prototyping by building the circuit out on a breadboard. I wanted to validate that the parts I chose would let me get the brightness and battery life that I needed to make this a functional and usable product. In a perfect world, my dog collar light would barely sip battery power while having the literal brightness of the sun. But as usual, reality involves some compromises, which takes me to how I selected the two most important components, the LEDs and the batteries. Everyone assumes that these little old school LEDs found in every traditional product under the sun are efficient. Sure, if you're using them on a TV or a blender where the electricity that the LED uses is negligible, then yes, they are. But for building a bright, multicolor wearable with a tiny battery, you may as well be trying to power an incandescent bulb for all the good this thing will do you. Fortunately, modern LED technology is a lot better. I settled on some Cree RGB LEDs. Here's an old school LED powered at five milliamps, and here's the one that's going to light up Joey. Choosing the right battery was even harder. At first, I thought I was going with a rechargeable option, such as a LiPo battery, but then I discovered that they had less capacity than I really expected. I would have, of course, had to build in all of the recharging circuitry, and that's not trivial, and then there were safety considerations to think about. So instead, I went with good old-fashioned coin cell batteries. These CR2032s have a surprisingly high capacity for their size, they don't require any recharging, and they're pretty darn unlikely to set my dog on fire. Unfortunately, with any battery this size, it's still not that much juice to work with. I found that the first version of my prototype was drawing about 30 milliamps of current. Given my chosen battery's capacity, that should have led to about 8 hours of battery life. That's not amazing, but it would have worked. Reality was much worse. When I actually tried powering the project off my intended batteries instead of my bench power supply, the life dropped to just a couple hours. What I hadn't realized is that coin cell batteries weren't designed to put out nearly that much current. They're actually supposed to put out fractions of a milliamp in super low power applications. But if you look at the data sheets, you can get away with a few milliamps if you're willing to sacrifice about half the life of a battery. This led to weeks of troubleshooting, asking questions on the internet, and daily feelings of hopelessness about the project. 
But finally, I managed to get the power consumption all the way down to three to five milliamps. That's six times higher efficiency. But since I was no longer frying the batteries, it actually led to over 40 hours of battery life instead of just two. I could say that's an improvement. If you want to know exactly how I cut the battery usage so much, then check out my deep dive video. It explains exactly how the dog collar light circuit works and the challenges that I encountered while building it. It's a gritty drama involving the shocking removal of voltage regulators, the blatant disregard of microprocessor specifications, turning four PWM pins into six, and much more. It's linked in the description down below. And while we're talking videos, hit the like button on this one. It helps the algorithm show it to more people, and that in turn helps me justify filming more of my projects for you. That's a pretty fair deal. At this point, I had proof that my battery, LED, and microprocessor choices could be combined together into something that was reasonably power efficient. But I still needed all of these components to fit into that dog bone shape. The only way to make everything fit was to design my own circuit board in the shape and size of my dog collar light. I spent the next couple months learning how to use KiCad, designing my own boards, and with the boards manufactured, it was time to start soldering the first light together so I could test it out. I uploaded my code and with great anticipation, I pressed the on button. And as I kind of expected, nothing happened. I would have to identify what went wrong with my board, fix the design and get it manufactured again. Except wait, no, that's not actually what happened. The battery was just dead. I put in a fresh battery, tried again and it worked. On the first version of the circuit board, on the first attempt at soldering it all together, it all just actually worked. With the electronics in some reasonable state, it was time to complete the design of a case and to get it 3D printed. Shout out to my brother Dan, who is a much better 3D modeler than me and helped me make that bone shape really come to life. After a lot of experimentation, for the materials, I went for a combination of hard PETG plastic for the case bottom and for the top, a flexible material called TPU. I had chosen a clear TPU filament thinking that would make for the brightest light coming out, but on my first print, I set the temperature too hot. Instead of coming out clear, the case came out as this really cool textured white that just looks so good and almost completely hides the 3D printer's layer lines. When I tried printing it again at the correct temperature, the result wasn't nearly as good, so I went back to that first white version. Sometimes there really are happy accidents. Using a flexible plastic for the top was critical for two reasons. First off, it makes it possible to press down in the middle and that in turn presses the button on the circuit board and turns on the light. Secondly, the flexible plastic allowed me to create a lip shape that makes it possible to open and close the light without any screws or latches or other hardware. And as a bonus, after a few iterations, I managed to make that lip pretty water resistant. That's a huge plus for a product that's meant to be used outdoors on a dog. Since it looked like this was actually going to work, I printed out a few more to give us gifts as well. That was the hardware done, but it still needed code. Now, up until this point, I had written a bunch of code because I needed to be able to test the light, but now it was time to really dig in and to build something that was going to be as robust and power efficient as possible. Weirdly enough, the biggest coding challenge turned out to be the user interface. The light only has one button, and that means that this button is responsible for a lot. If the light is already turned on, a short press of this button must cycle to the next mode. But if the button is held down for a little longer, it must instead turn off the light. And if the light is off and the button is pressed, it must turn on, but only when you press the button three times rapidly. That keeps the dog from turning on the light accidentally when shaking his head and doing other dog stuff. That is actually a lot of state to keep track of, and it gets a lot more complicated when you need to put the AT Tiny to sleep when the light is off. I also needed to be very smart with how I coded the light shows themselves, since they naturally have a major impact on battery life. One of my go-to tricks was alternating which side of a light is on at any given time, creating this cool alternating blinking effect that looks totally intentional, but also has the side effect of using only half as much battery as turning both lights on at once. 
with the hardware, the plastics, and the code all done, and with lots of testing and iteration, I am happy to say that I have version 1.0 of the dog collar light complete. And man, oh man, I am so pleased with how this turned out. It's way better than what you can get at the pet store. It's actually quite durable, I know, because I've been using it for tons of hours now. And most importantly, it's keeping Joey safe and visible at the dog park, even when the days get shorter. If you want to dig deeper into the electronics of this project, then be sure to also check out the description for a more in-depth video of all of that geeky hardware design stuff as I dissect how this light actually works. And of course, if you want to support this channel and see more videos like this, hit that subscribe button and hit that notification bell. Thanks for watching.